Last night I had a dream that I was painting the shadow of a rectangle, a typical painter form. And I woke up and I was very excited about this. Now I don't actually think that that's a particularly amazing idea. Uh, obviously shadows have been widely used. For example, Richard Hamilton, who was a friend of mine, did shadow man paintings. And my friend Etta Cetera had silhouette paintings all over the walls of her house. Uh, now, of course, those are human forms, which serves a very different purpose than what I'm about to do does. The basic idea here is to set up a piece of uh, poster board on a on an easel and then to uh, shine a work light on it and try to get a strong shadow and then to mix some black latex paint with water to gray it down a bit and uh, make a shadow that will probably go across the floor and uh, across the wall and maybe onto the ceiling too. This is in preparation for a show of paintings, my first show of paintings in 40 years that I'm hoping to have at a gallery associated with bottom feeder books. I don't know whether this is really going to happen or not. The thing is, is that painting is definitely not my thing. I've been involved with time-based media for a long time, which I find much more interesting, but it's nice to do something different for a change. I have quite a few projects going on right now, most of which are more performance-oriented. And uh, this is something that I can just do at home. And I've made it a priority to do it today because I dreamt about it last night and I kept waking up all night long and thinking about this and thinking, yeah, you have to do this, etc., etc. So here I am. Here I am at an undisclosed location. Uh, I am sparing the audience and myself of showing all the setup that I'm doing. So far I've managed to get the lamp and the easel, which I no longer have the uh, white poster board on, but instead I have one of the palettes from the first School of Negativity Painting, which is made at Lake Erie. And the basic idea of these School of Negativity works is that they explore some aspect of negativity. So for example, the first painting was using complementary colors of Lake Erie. And then the second thing was a movie called uh, uh, Like a Decoy Out of Water. Even though this is a place intended for enjoying nature, there are signs around warning one to not touch objects of a particular appearance because they may be explosives. There are big guns. There are people walking around on the beach with protective masks on for no apparent reason. It's no wonder people seem so afraid. I wish I could get to my own universe and leave these deranged people behind. In a sense, that was exploring a person from an alternate universe's puzzlement over ulterior motives in the uh, toxic environment. And then the third one was uh, School of Negativity painting Impossible Traces. <laughs> the old idea of mine, which is to take the traces of a building that uh, were left on another building that had been attached to it, and then painting those traces somewhere where it makes no sense for them to be there, so they're impossible traces. And the next painting was uh, a paint-by-numbers painting. Of Van Gogh's uh, sunflowers, sunflowers in a vase painting, uh, in which I developed a different set of rules for following the paint-by-numbers than than rules that would produce the a reproduction, a copy of the Van Gogh painting. Uh, and then number four 
which could be referred to simply as it's the thought that counts uh, has many textual things going on, one of which is the removal of and substitution of blanks for every letter in thought except for O, and then in counts the removal of O and substitution of a blank, which then produces a sentence which could be, it's the O that counts. So depending on how one thinks about it, one can either see that sentence as, as it's the thought that counts or it's the O that counts, and there's more to it too. But then the most recent one about which I made the movie called uh, The Making of the Making of the Making of. Uh, ends up coming across, I think, more, even though this is unintentional, of a commentary on uh, the destruction of the environment. It really wasn't meant to be that way because all of the school of negativity works are intended to explore a formal aspect of negativity rather than to make any sort of political commentary, although the second work, the like a decoy out of water, uh, obviously does go in that direction deliberately. So physically, formally, the negative aspects of it involved cutting out things from a painting and revealing underneath a, 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 one of the two palettes that were used in the making of the first School of Negativity painting, uh, and also erasing, although I'm erasing essentially nothing. In other words, nothing ends up being erased, but the action of erasure is there. Well, this one is a little bit more clear. Uh, instead of having the painting that's on the easel be the end result, it's the shadow of the painting that's on the easel, which in a sense is the negative of it. As usual, I'm working in very crowded circumstances, which is no one's fault other than my own. It's a delicate matter to try to avoid tripping over cords and pulling out power, USB power cords. Something has gotten fucked up already. Which is this, which apparently I didn't have tightened enough. And I didn't bring down enough uh, tripods. So I need to go get another one.
Okay, here's a Tupperware, a small Tupperware container, half full of water. And I fucked up my uh, shadow. There we go, that's better. That's pretty good. I forgot to bring up something to stir the paint. But I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to pour some in here. And the paint just went straight to the bottom. I really want this shadow to be a sort of faint gray. I don't want it to be the more obvious black. Let's see how this goes. Onto the wall. Where the shadow gets pretty hazy. Right, so I should obviously switch to a bigger brush. Ooh, yeah, that's way too watery. Of course, by painting out, by painting up higher, I'm hoping that I can uh, brush out the drips. Now, look at what that's doing. It's actually kind of interesting. It's getting rid of the old paint that was on there. So I made it too watery, but at the same time, it is accomplishing the type of gray that I was hoping for. Or at least getting close to it. Now how clearly this idea is going to come across in the finished painting is open to question. This is really uh, an experiment, something that is done in preparation to doing a painting in the gallery at Tom Peter Books. If this show even materializes, I'm not absolutely sure it will.
Will this be recognizable? As a shadow of an easel with something on it? The sloppiness of the painting goes contrary to that. I could have mixed the paint better and rolled it on. because of the varying degrees of opacity and transparency. Or the extremity of the contrast is definitely a bit much. Okay, only one more leg to do. And that's it. <sighs> Too many drips. Which then becomes smears. All in all, very messy job. But good practice. Alright. by itself would be better. I think that's what I'll do the next time. Just the easel.
I was just looking to see whether you had a tape measure on your oh, belt or not. Yeah. Uh, and then I remembered that I had it in the other room and then I decided not to use it anyway <laughs> because I just needed a straight edge. And I forgot that I had this four foot Oh, yeah, perfect. Uh, for the level. The, the, there was so much ambient light that when I first did this, I did it in a space that was pretty dark, so it was really, it. It was really easy. Yeah. Not that it's hard now, but... No, you know, I, you can, I can barely see the line anymore. Kind of yeah, that's why I had to put this here, so that if I... And, it, you know, it's going to be sloppy. I mean, it doesn't have to be not sloppy. It's... Yeah. And this, this stuff will just, I can just take a uh, razor and just scrape it right off, right? I hope so. I mean, it's <laughs> it's latex mixed with water. It's like, it's about as unsticking st as you can get, yeah. basically. I yeah, mean, yeah. it's... Uh, yeah, I guess we'll see when we get there. But I, I imagine it should not be too problematic. I, I don't think it'll be hard at all. I mean, I think uh, a scouring pad... Yeah. Would probably be, would get it off. I mean, every, every time I paint the walls in here, anyways, like I, I dribble paint all the time and it just, it, uh, it, just it usually comes, just comes right off. It does. Right. But I, I bite my fingernail. Let's see, here we go. Yeah, it just, it scrapes right off with your fingernail. And at worst, I've got just a flat razor and I can just probably just like, shh. Just yeah, I mean, and of course, I'll be here tearing it down too. So yeah, yeah. It's not like I'm going to say, well, thanks for letting me, uh, <laughs> radically alter your space and I'm going to leave now, you know. I think between the two of us will get this space looking back to normal in a few hours. Yeah, I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. I mean, I hope I'm, I hope I'm not wrong about that. I don't, I don't think it'll be wrong. Um, you flash, flash holes with, with... I'm not going for a, a, a photorealist painting here. I'm yeah. just trying to make, see like, I, I, I mean, I see it, but it, there's so little difference here between the white and the shadow that yeah. it's almost impossible for me to see. Uh, but still, you know, it, again, it's just like the idea is you look and you go, oh, it's a shadow. And then you go, oh, okay, it's a shadow of an easel. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be, like I was saying, it doesn't have to be photorealist. Yeah. I always thought those photorealist painters were interesting and yet at the same time, you know, like, what was his name, Malcolm Morley, do you know his stuff? Mm -hmm. You know, he would take a photograph of the Queen Mary or something, and then he would, like a postcard of the Queen Mary, mm -hmm. and then he would do a large canvas based off of that postcard, and it would look like it was a fucking photograph, you know? It would be, it would be amazing how good he was, well, but, I would, but I would think... Well, why was the photograph just good enough? Like, why... Well, you know, that, that's the thing. Like, I mean, in a way, it was just like a display of skill. Yes. And, and I get that, you know. And I'm impressed by it, too. I look at it and I go, wow, you are really good. You know, that's really good. <laughs> but at the same time, I think, why? You know, why? Like, isn't that kind of a waste of your time or whatever? Like, yeah. you know, I like the, I mean, I, I love a lot of surrealist painting and the thing about those paintings is that they're bringing into existence imagery that wouldn't exist otherwise. And that's one of the reasons why I love them so much. You know, I, I mean, Dali. Some of those paintings are just absolutely amazing. You know, they're, yeah. the imagery is just so incredibly fresh. You ever see the movie that's about him going to art school with Louis Bunuel and... Uh, no. Garcia Lorca. No. I'm not against having drips, but here's my first one. It could just, could it just wipe off right now? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do yeah. after I get some more of the paint off of this, this brush. Well, it sure does come off easy when it's wet. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> uh, I mean, it really doesn't matter that there's a drip from an aesthetic point of view, it's fine. Uh, Shannon Delu is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's pretty hard to, uh, to better that one. Wait. I'll recognize the name of the movie if you come across it. Is it fairly recent? Yeah. Is it called Little Ashes? 
Oh wow, I thought I would recognize the name of it, but now I don't know whether it was Little Lashes or not because Little Lashes sounds familiar, but it probably sounds familiar just because of those two words rather than because of the name of the movie. What is it? What's the description of the movie? Um, uh, Little Ashes focuses on an unconsummated attraction between Dali and Larka. Who the flower of youthful idealism and the awakening of the flesh began to confuse sexuality with artistry. That's Arn right. Pat Arn Patterson, is that? No, I don't know who that is, but he's, that's, he's that's probably it. Yeah. Came out in 2008. Yeah, that seems about right. I love the way shadows look. I never get tired of looking at shadows, <laughs> right? I mean, even in uh, a painted form like this, which is obviously just really sloppy and and, and shows no painterly skill whatsoever, uh, I really like the way it looks. You're going to have to pay for a special use permit for $50, and we'll let you in there for a half an hour. I said, well, I can't even set up the cameras in a half an hour yeah. you know, for what I'm doing. So it's going to have to be longer than that. And, and then I just went into my whole routine of explaining who I am and saying, look, I'm not like some Hollywood guy or a big rock star or anything. I'm just somebody who yeah. does this out of my love for it, etc. I don't make any money off of it and blah, 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 blah. And I said that I'm going to have to be in there for at least a couple of hours. And uh, so they kind of backed down a little bit and said, okay, you'll still have to pay for the special use permit, but we'll let you in there and we'll have to have somebody there with you. And then that, and I ended up getting a friend of mine as a cellist who I play with to come. So he was one of the people who was a part of the shoot. And I did it, and there was a guy there who was, who was just a sort of park volunteer who was there with us the whole time. And he was nice, but he was not a person who would have any idea about what the hell was going on. You know, he, he was obviously not a person who watched movies or, you know, other than maybe TV or whatever, and... And he would, but he was nice, he was real friendly. So we did it, and it was one of the weirdest things this guy had ever seen. And then when it was over, I said, well, okay, I don't, should I go to the park office and pay them now? Or how does it work? You know, uh, right. blah, blah, blah. He said, I don't know, I don't have anything to do with that aspect of it. You know, you'll, you'll have to go and ask the park guy. So I did, and he said, oh, we wouldn't charge you. We wouldn't make you, you know, pay for your dream, because I told him that I'd always dreamed of wanting to shoot a movie in a lighthouse. Mm -hmm. So after all of that aggravation that I went through at first... They just let you do it? They just let me do it, and then and they were totally nice about it. <laughs> and I think that the reason why is because I had been really nice. You know, I had shown up, they'd met me, and they were like, this guy is really weird. I mean, I don't know what the fuck he, he's all about, but then when I was dealing with them, I think the guy who was the volunteer who was helping just uh, went back to the parks department guy and said, oh yeah, this guy's really cool. I mean, he's, I don't understand what he's doing, but I mean, it's interesting, and yeah. you know, and uh, he's real nice, and so you didn't have to pay for the No, I, well, I had to pay for the apartment, which was the expensive part, but I didn't have to pay for the special use permit, which they had made a fairly big deal of, you know, explaining to me that I absolutely had to pay for this thing. So that's the kind of thing that happens to me from time to time that's nice, where once you just meet people, yeah. They realize, oh, okay, this guy's not like a millionaire rock star or whatever. Yeah. He's just some schlep. Let him shoot his movie. Let him shoot his movie. And, and the guy who was helping us said, uh, can I get a copy of the movie? I want to see what you do with it. Because it, it wouldn't have made any sense to him whatsoever what we were doing. And I said, yeah. And then I sent him, uh, 
a, dot, a QuickTime movie file of it and said, here, you know, you can have your own copy of the movie. Now, nobody would do that ordinarily. You know, yeah. everybody's too protective of their, of their masterpiece. But I make so much work that for me, it's like, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, this guy was nice. What's, what's this guy going to do? Was he going to sell it or something? Or like... Yeah, it's not too likely. But, and if he did, of course, I would not like him anymore. But, you know, at the same time, it's not like I am going to die as a result of it or whatever. So, um, so I just gave him his own copy of it. <laughs> But the thing, but you know, they and the fifty dollars, okay, I could afford it. But it really made a difference. I made a movie once where I rented a limousine, and uh, you know, we did a scene. It probably took a couple of hours, mm -hmm. and then afterwards, and I, I really had like twenty five dollars in my name or something. You know, mm -hmm. it was pretty bad. So I, I had asked in advance and been told that I would get this rate, which was really cheap. And then I was like, afterwards I thought, well, wait a minute, was that $25 an hour or was that $25 total, right? right. And, I, and I only had $25, so I was really nervous when I asked the guy, okay, you know, what do I owe you? I got the shot over with as quickly as possible, et cetera, the scene. And he said, oh, I really had fun doing that, that was great. You know, you don't have to pay me anything. <laughs> if it weren't for experiences like that, I wouldn't have been able to get nearly as much done in my life, you know? <laughs> because I just wouldn't be able to afford it. And of course, I never saw that guy again. You know, it's not like he, we became friends or anything. Yeah. He just... And he, you know, he... He drove a limousine like a limousine driver, you know, probably with his cap or whatever uh -huh. his shtick was. So, and he was in the movie. It's a pretty hilarious scene, actually. But <laughs> looks good. Yeah, this the watery latex I think looks really nice because it's it's not. I like the inconsistency of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I like the... I like the hard line, the leaves of the bottom, like where it, where it kind right, of pulls up. Right, right. Oh, this is stop recording too. But this stops recording after 29 minutes, so... Okay. Um, and this one is still recording. I put it, my last battery in this. So I have had some footage because what's interesting to me is usually not interesting to other people. Do you know the, the, fil the filmmaker Ernie Gare? No. Do you know structuralist filmmaking at all? I'm aware of it, but I don't know. All right, well, I could be said to have been a structuralist filmmaker for a little while in, the, in my early days. And like a film like... Uh, well, both subtitles and Bob Cobbing, which you you know you saw subtitles was the one with the with the brain scan stuff yeah. went along with it. Yeah. And Bob Cobbing was the one with the with the flexible screen. Yeah. Uh, those could both be called structuralist movies. Okay. And anyway, Ernie Gare is one of the more well known structuralist filmmakers, but not really structuralist all the time. I saw him in person once. He was showing the film. He said, this is a film I made in New York. I lived in this Jewish district. And uh, I just shot footage out my window of the people gesturing out on the street. So it's all close-ups of hand gestures of people out on the street. Mm -hmm. He said, this is the kind of thing that doesn't interest other people at all. And, but it interests me. And that's why I made the movie. And I always really liked him for saying that because... Basically, he just said, I'm making the movie that I want to make. Yeah. If other people don't like it, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's here. And so you can, here's the movie where you can watch people's hand gestures. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, move the easel. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, even if you don't assume that it's an easel or if you don't think that it's an easel, it's still an interesting image to look at. 
Especially with the the wiped out parts, the wiped out drips and things like that. Yeah. Which I know you weren't. That wasn't your goal. But no, but it's fine. But it's it, part of it. I remember. I remember Warhol talking about his early days as a painter. And... Can I turn on the big lights? See what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. See how it looks there. Oh yeah. I gotta take some stills of it too. But we're always saying, oh, you know, back when I started doing painting, you had to have drips or you weren't a painter. Uh -huh. Which is one of those typically glib things that we're always say. It's funny, things like this just make me laugh. <laughs> you know? I mean, I like them visually, but they also just make me laugh. Let's see what it looks like from the outside. Yeah, I mean, it's that I'm combined with a sign when it's done right. I'm, I'll probably move that big plant over there, too. Just yeah, so it, can, just it has so a real there. presence. It's it? very simple. Yeah, it looks good. And I, it, obviously it didn't take me very long. And You can put the monitor to the left of it? Yeah, the monitor will be to the left of it. Are you using cord covers or anything, or are you just letting the cord just go? I was just going to let the cord go. But if you, and maybe put a little bit of a gaffer's tape it makes no difference to me. It's just like the cord's going to go, go right across the thing. Yeah, that's true. But I, I can have it go down across the baseboard and then up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's which right. is probably what I'll do. You can paint over it. What, what, what color is the cord? The white? It's white. Yeah. I could paint over it, it's true, but I don't even care that much. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe I will. Maybe I'll look at it and go, yeah, I should do that. Anyway, I'm going to take a picture of it just the way it is right now. Not here. So I've seen a movie of hers because she tried to become an actress, just a regular actress, and was in some like Joel Heist movie or whatever that was pretty bad, but I, I don't know. You, I'm, you, I'm sure you would have heard of her. It was only worth doing if I went there naked or, or whatever. Now, the, okay, the, the shelf. Now, this is where I start to get nervous about whether we're going to do this right or not. It's this shelf here. Okay. It, or it's there's three shelves and I have to make sure I get the right one. Uh, it's got to be this one. Yeah, it's got to be this one because it's the only one where the TV is angled, so that's why it's two boards. Oh, okay. See how there's holes yep. here and yep. there. Okay, yep. so those holes are for this. To zip tie it down? To zip tie down, exactly. Okay. So 60 inches to the middle of the screen. The screen is... Yeah, it's nine and a quarter. So four and a half, four and five eighths. Four and five eighths subtracted from 60 is where the top of the board will be. 55 and three eighths. Yep to the top of the board. We need to get this level, which is very close. Okay, that's good. Okay. And then, yep. Uh, it's, there's nothing to it, and they're, they really hold. Yep. And look at that. Yep. Yeah. Do you want me to turn this camera on for this part? Uh, yes, sorry. I forgot that I had turned it off, so thank uh, you. I guess I just hit it on. Uh, now let me do it. Yeah. Um, so, and then I, th I come across things like these screw anchors. I think, I love the person who made the screw anchor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I constantly come across things that humans do where I think, ah, oh, that's amazing. It's really great that somebody came up with this. Yeah. Just something as simple as that, or the tripod, or the camera, or all of these other things that human beings create. Humans constantly create the most amazing, wonderful things, and then yet at an interpersonal level, they can be such assholes, <laughs> right? Yeah. So what? When was the last time you had a show? Like, I know you don't typically have paintings, but like the last time you would say you had an exhibition. 
I don't know. I'd have to think about it. Every once in a while I get offered shows and I usually just don't do it because I'm not that into the whole exhibit business. But, uh... This is easy. You just, you just do your thing here. Like, it's not like... Yeah, you know, I can't even think of when the last one was. I mean, I, I show movies all the time and that's yeah. what I do more than anything else. Uh... Exhibit, you know, I mean, I've had like so. I will show a movie in a museum, for example. Mm -hmm. I've done that a fair amount of times, but does that qualify as an exhibit? I don't know. I mean, I, I had a, I had a sound sculpture, you know, show at the Pittsburgh Center of the Arts at, as a part of the biennial. So maybe that was the last one. That was two thousand three. Oh wow. So I think I'm going to put this price tag here. Like this. We're, oh, because there needs to be a price tag for, for the painting. Oh, for it's the for the floor. painting, but it's also for the, the TV and the... And the uh, because the, uh, what I offer is the ability to have me go to your house or whatever, whatever place. And, and install this. And, and, and put it, and do yeah. a new painting. Yeah, yeah. All right, see, I, 